five red flags to watch out for right now. What the fuck is going on to BH? The truth about the N word. Um. Cartoon Network teaches kids that they're racists. You know what? Let's do this one. Let's do this one. Let's do the Cartoon Network. Two, three. <laughs> Let's do this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's hey, when we're older, let's get married. Ha! You can't get married. Why not? Black people can't marry white people. Hey now. It's Garnet from. Is it very loud? Sorry, I don't know why it's so loud. Steven Universe. Kids, don't be racist. Cut. Okay, people, we just need to get coverage. We'll start again in five. This is the cheesiest job I've ever done. Stuff like this doesn't actually happen in real life. <laughs> whoa, whoa there. Are you kidding? It totally does. Just because this has never happened to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Oh, whoa. Well, I'm sorry. Seriously, I didn't know. Yeah, everyone messes up sometimes. But you gotta realize it hurts. Wait a minute, we just had this conversation today. Damn, I'm ripping off Cartoon Network. We just had this conversation today, didn't I? Didn't we? To deal with racism. And when people act like it's not real, it makes it feel even worse. You have to acknowledge racism to work against it. Thanks to systemic racism, most of your storytellers prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. Ask yourself as you're learning history, who's telling the story? Was this modified to make white readers comfortable? Are major details being left out that would credit people of color and center True, Pearl! Their point of view? Honestly, I should have asked for script approval before agreeing to do this. <laughs> Okay, Benson, I just found a bruh moment. Can we skip the bruh moment? Can I lower the bruh moment? No, see, here's the thing. Um, John Doyle doesn't know what zoomers think are funny and so john doyle heard that zoomers think loud things are funny but that's not really how it works there has to be the right thing being loud it can't just be loud it has to be the right thing being loud see i know i speak zoomer i told you it has to be the right thing it has to be something like this hold on let me show you i'll show you want to know how i know watch 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 i'll show you i'll show you Here we go. Wait, wait, where's the one? Fawn, where's the video? Which was the one? What was it called? Wait, it's in my it's in my history. Hold on, I'll show you. I'll I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Just watch. I just gotta find the video. I know. You can't wait, can you? But I'll find it. I hadn't prepared this, so you'll have to forgive me. Where is it? Where's my damn thing? It's been so many days since I found this Zoomer meme. Oh, yeah, there was the cursed thing. I'm almost there. I've almost found it. Maybe I haven't. Maybe I watched it with... Fawn, did I watch it on your phone? You know the one. Fawn! Fawn, help me! Come here, help me! I don't want to spoil the stream! Wait, you put it in chat? No, don't watch it, chat! Thank you! I don't want to look at chat, I wanted to talk to you! Here we go, this is the one, ready? Watch! See, I can be a boomer and a zoomer at the same time, watch this! Please, please, do not push the button! You have no idea of what it- See? I told you. Has to be the right thing very loud. 
Oh, do you need it again, Vermin Hands? Here, I'll show it to you again. Andrew! Please, please, do not push the button! You have no idea of what it- I told you. I know. Doo doo fart is a, is a classic. If you but see, doo doo fart alone is not funny. If I was to just look at the camera and say doo doo fart, you wouldn't laugh. But if I was to look at the camera and go doo doo fart, but better, you would laugh. See? Anyway, let's continue. It needs it needs it needs to be the right thing very loud. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. God, his audio balance is so Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami, the Generation Z equivalent, the Zoomer equivalent of the baby boomers. Wrong! Wrong! I just wanted to grill is now officially, I just wanted to watch cartoons, but you can't anymore. You can't just grill. You can't just watch cartoons. You can't sit on the sidelines. Your participation in these narratives will become mandatory, whether that's through propaganda and social engineering, state mandated diversity training, etc. You will be made to comply. And the left will say, well, this is actually a good thing because it'll finally solve racism. But the reality is that this exists. At Dude, slow the fuck down. Does anybody remember Goofus and Gallant? Does anybody remember Goofus and Gallant? Does anybody remember the, like, fucking cartoon codes? Do you know that cartoons used to be, like, you used to literally have to obey, like, specific rules? Like, for example, has anybody ever seen the World War II propaganda of Looney Tunes? Yeah. As the predominant narrative, because... The, the idea that narratives are new to, new to fucking, uh cartoons or comics is ridiculous the, there have always been political narratives in them it's just which ones you want me to put them on 0.75 i don't think it'll work but let's give it a try here we go it makes people a lot of money and it gets them a lot of power and because this is a narrative that is inherently anti-american and to this the left will say oh well so you're admitting that racism in america are inherently intertwined that's mis yeah, but I can't handle it. It sounds too weird. Here, we need to put it back to normal. The point. The point is that the solutions, at least the ones that aren't ambiguous grifts, which we'll talk about in a second, but the solution. Ambiguous grifts? that are proposed by these activists in terms of policy are all basically state facilitated redistributions of resources the methodology of which being whatever the woke mob deems fitting to solve racism and that's in terms of wealth yeah the people who wrote archie comics were in charge of censorship for every comic in america yeah he's just making up yeah duck and cover yeah there you go there's another example duck and cover job opportunities, educational opportunities, etc. And we've gone through in great detail before in other videos about how there's no legitimate evidence for systemic racism in America. But even that aside, if I can embody... Try again the archetypal conservative uncle for a second the whole point of america is that you should be free to basically do whatever you want in terms of climbing the ladders making something of yourself pursuing the american dream and that you should be free to do that without people coming in and mess shouldn't you also be free to not climb any ladders shouldn't you also be able to like live your life if you don't want to climb corporate ladders or do you believe that you should only be free to climb corporate ladders we know the answer to that one up your stuff but these people don't like america we know that and so they rightfully calculated that if you can mobilize minority groups to vote for you by saying hey uh, racism is your biggest problem and we're gonna fight for you and then you can open up the borders and flood the country with non-white immigrants at the oh whoa dude whoa what that was quite a jump well if you if you appeal to the if you if you tell black people that you'll give them rights and you'll treat them with basic respect unlike the republican party and then you open up the gates and you flood the country with non-white people and they're getting rid of all the white people and the white children will disappear holy shit my dude holy shit slow down ask the majority of them to that political capital all while mobilizing your control of media every level of education to convince the yeah, country yeah this is jq shit does he normally do jq shit does he do JQ shit usually? I thought he was more like a traditionalist and not like a fucking Nazi. Wait, is he, is he always been like a Nazi? I don't remember. I barely remember.
society as a whole that racism is the biggest problem. It's a public health crisis, and, and we're the only ones who can fix it. It works out really well oh. for permanently consolidating political power, especially when the solutions to these problems are not promoted publicly. Like if you look at the mainstream dialogue, you'll find all this information about how to be anti-racist because simply not being racist isn't enough anymore. Moral imperialism, that's the strategy. An effective Moral, moral imperialism. <sighs> moral imperialism versus, you know, when we go in, blow the fuck out of a country, and then force them to adopt our culture, buy into our products, uh, subscribe to our religion, you know, yeah. Strategy, we'll go through that in a second. But basically, the entire business of being anti-racist, which has made people millions, even billions of dollars, depending on your metric, basically exists as a circuitous rabbit hole of self-help. Depending self on your metric? Oh, Jesus. For guilty white people. You read the articles, you read the books, they all tell you, educate yourself. On what? Who knows? But you go to this event, talk to these people, oh, that'd they'll be tell amazing, you to read this thing, which will then tell you to listen to these people, etc. Or give money to these people, these organizations, these businesses. If you give money to a black restaurant, you're actually going to solve racism, etc. But there's no information for how we actually combat this issue. Like, how do we actually put boots on the ground, so to speak? And the reason for that is... I have a feeling... I have a feeling like... John Doyle has a very different meaning of boots on the ground. It doesn't exist. By necessity, there is no clearly defined solution because that would require an actual problem. But this narrative requires the existence of this vague boogeyman of racism, arbitrarily applied so as to keep those in power in control of you and in control of the narrative. Projection. Projection. Notice this guy's entire identity is your washroom breeding Bolsheviks? Buy war bonds. Make America great again. Commie tears. This is projection. This guy is fighting a threat that he doesn't even he doesn't even believe there's any commies in America. And yet at the same time, they're simultaneously threatening America. In that, like, this is the thing. Conservatives, remember. The reason why people say that conservatives always project is because conservatives lack the imagination to understand their opponents. They don't get their opponents. They have a fundamental incapability of estimating and understanding their opponent's position. Otherwise, they wouldn't be conservatives. They wouldn't be fucking conservatives. Now, as a result, all they have is their worldview. And so they t they tell on themselves with how they describe their opponents. <laughs> it's ideological imperialism. They want to make sure that you can never think anything other than what they want. Meanwhile, pushing for meanwhile, John Doyle pushes forward a traditionalist view of America that only allows you to be white and Christian and straight. It's projection. You know, see, he tells you, you they'll make you gay. They'll turn, they'll make you be gay. While he simultaneously advocates for a world in which you are not allowed to be gay. You are only allowed to be straight. They're telling on themselves. Pay attention to this because conservatives do this all the time. They do it all the time. Oh, of course, but that doesn't matter, hippie punk. It doesn't matter if it never was or was or was whether it was or wasn't. It doesn't matter in their worldview. They want to conquer you and make you follow their worldview because that's how how they believe a strong society is made. Now, see, if you're not a brain rotten, empathy lacking conservative, you can imagine that people have different motivations for different things. But when you're a conservative, the only way you understand the world is through domination. You don't understand that people think differently than you. That is one of their fundamental flaws. I should. Well, somebody should make it for me, Nibiru. Maybe someday, maybe someday somebody will make me something like that. But it's got to be really cool. I've got to look awesome. Otherwise, it wouldn't Cannot be great. Can I easily defeat a narrative night, that is not subject to the laws by. of reality? And even ignoring all the data that disproves that boogeyman. Who exactly is racist? What if data? What data? Assume, and they do assume this, that it can only be white people. That's only like 60% of the population, right? What happens if we assume that a third of those people are anti racist Oh, yeah, that's another thing, too. Um, they steal art, too? Yeah. You want to know why conservatives get so mad about cartoons? Do you want to know? Here's the secret. I'm going to let you in on some secret wisdom. Do you want to know why conservatives get so mad about Steven Universe, Adventure Time, whatever? 
It's because they desperately wish that they could have something like that for themselves, but their own worldview makes it impossible for them to make anything like that. Because things like these beautiful works of art that they um, that they witness, they wish they could create that, but they can't. Their own worldview prevents them from making beautiful art. Occasionally, one of them might luck onto art. Yeah, Owl House, She-Ra, DuckTales, Amphibia, name it. You name it, they're mad about it. They've always been mad about it. They've always been mad about comic books. They've always been mad about art. They Conservatives hate art. And the reason why is because art is inherently experimental. Art is human. It's messy. It's it's experimental. It's it's edgy. There's there's questions being asked that challenge tradition. But they don't believe in that. Now, here's the thing. It's funny because y you know uh it, you know it's it's like how do I describe this? Hmm. Imagine if the only painting you could ever have was a painting, like a, a piece of the Sistine Chapel. You might see that and you might go, wow, the Sistine Chapel, the art of the Sistine Chapel, so beautiful, so incredible. Made by a guy who the conservatives of his time, by the way, didn't like. You know that, right? I know this is a little bit of a of a of an aside, but you know that like Michelangelo had to study on bodies and he had to do that out of his home country because Christians didn't allow you to observe dead bodies. So he learned from uh he would literally travel to Muslim countries and learn from physicians who'd actually been able to study the body. But imagine if you only had that one piece of great art yeah, I watched a whole documentary about Michelangelo. He learned anatomy so well because he he's tra he traveled lots because he was very, very rich. You know, well, he wasn't rich, but he had patrons who were rich. And they sent him to go study from artists who actually knew in countries where surgery was allowed. He painted all the dicks on there just to piss off the Pope. But I mean, here's the thing. The point is, is that if you had a piece of art that was revered and the only art that could be created was art that was a copy of that original art. All you're going to end up with is a million iterations on the exact same piece. And by the way, conservatives are like this. Um, I don't know. I think it was Da Vinci. Um, however, uh, conservatives do this all the time with art. You notice that they get really mad when anything isn't like classical art. Like, they get really, really mad about, like, oh, it's not, it's modern art. It's blah, blah, blah. They get mad about every type of art. They're traditionalists. They believe in a thing that they believe used to exist. So they, they believe in, in a society uh, uh, or, or a style of things that was better in the past, a purer past. And they don't believe in iter in, in building up from that. They don't believe in, in, in innovating. Because that goes against dogma. That goes against traditionalism. This is why conservative art sucks. Yes! But that is the that is the logical extent of their viewpoint. Because this is why I say that traditionalism, like capital T tradition, tradition is really bad. Because it tells you that to iterate, to evolve is bad. And that's not true. Evolution, iteration, uh, experimentation are our greatest strengths. But conservatives don't believe in that. And that, and, and, and yet they know this. Somewhere deep inside, a lot of conservatives do know this. That's why they get so fucking pissed over art being leftist. Seriously, you don't think, come on, you don't think that these conservatives actually like Steven Universe and think it's fucking based? They wish they had something like that that told them what they wanted to feel, but they can't because their worldview does not allow for that type of iteration, that type of creativity. It's just true. I'm sorry. It's sad. It's it's pathetic, really, but it's true. And they can't let themselves enjoy it. Yep. They're, they're trapped in a prison of their own minds. It's very sad. But also, fuck them because they make the world worse for the rest of us.
racist. They're woke. Then we're left with best case scenario being that 40% of the country is racist. Okay. Now what about the percentage of those people that actually have the power that is required by their new definition to be racist? Pretty sure like a fifth of the country is under 18, so they wouldn't have any power. So now we're down to it's like 32% of the view. country is oppressing minorities. Okay. Well, how much of that 32% is actually in a position of legitimate power or influence as compared to just right wing graphs, America, racist, not racist. Ama am incredible. It says America up here in the corner, by the way, with it with a like as in not America, like America. It's a normal job. Maybe right like half data. If even that. So let's say we're down to like 16% of the country is responsible for systemic oppression of non-whites and also women and gay people, probably. Okay, what about the ability that could very well be a possible that could very well be a possibility. Ability of these people to actually execute their agenda right, without we'll being caught by the people who stasis. aren't racist. The 60% of people who are either non-white or woke white. Maybe like another half or so, which would bring us to like 8%. And these aren't exact figures, right? It's just a thought experiment. But I would imagine that's approximately true. I would guess that at the best, this boogeyman at the most is 8% of the population. That's assuming that everything that they say about white people, about racism, that's all true. And then best case scenario, 8%. And that's the thing, we can talk all day about racism, but you actually have to identify the problems concretely and who is responsible for causing them, but they don't want to do that because the point is not solving a problem. The point is gaining wealth and gaining power. And it's not even just white people anymore. They're actually starting to wake up. The problem is black people gaining wealth and power? Is that literally what he's saying? Like, I mean, that's the implication of his argument here. He's saying they're talking about wealth and power, and he's saying that's a problem. Black people getting wealth and power is a problem. That's about as mask off as you can go. The reality of Asian privilege. So we might actually have to team up here, which works out well because white women are basically a lost cause at this point. And of course, if you're a white. Excuse me. Yeah, nice modicum. Woman watching, I'm not talking about you. I'm sure that you get what I am talking about. And I already got crap from the ethno nationalists because I called for a complete and total shutdown on white women until we can figure out what the hell is going on. But I'm in. Is he talking? Br wow. This is the loudest. This is the foghorn of foghorns. Holy shit. Time to take it further now. It might be time to fully endorse and commission the Eurohan master race. I don't know, but we're gonna go over these two videos. Eurohan? What does that mean? What does that mean? Is that Han supposed to be Han Chinese? Is that about is that about having an Asian white? Oh no, who's got a kink? Oh no, he's got a kink. Okay, listen, listen. <sighs> For those of you who don't know, because we're doing a takedown segment, what this entire segment is, when he says white women are a lost cause, what he means, and I'm not kidding you, what he's talking about is that white women like black men too much. That's what he's saying. That is the, that is the wink, wink, nudge, nudge he's doing. I'm not kidding you. That's what he's saying. He's referencing race mixing without saying those words. This is called a dog whistle. He's doing it very loudly. That's what that was a reference to. Just so you all know. He, he's saying that, that white women don't want to be trad wives anymore because they've been too corrupted by hip hop and rap and they want to fuck black guys now. That's what he's saying. That's what that is. That's what that means. For anybody watching this, that is what that means. I know, but here's the thing. A lot of people who watch this won't know what we're talking about. And he's also playing into that, ah, yes, Chinese women are good and traditional and they will be my submissive wife. It's very fucked. It's incredibly fucked. Yeah, that was a loud whistle. But I just want to make sure that we're being clear here. Yeah from Cartoon Network. I do want to make sure, though, that we're taking the right thing away from this, which is that conservatives are getting slapped in the face by the reality of woke capitalism. We have no idea how to seriously combat it. We have long associated capitalism as an inherent good, something that is always good for us. Oh, there's that. Ah, the Nazbol pivot. Hey, there we got it. The Nazbol pivot. Okay, 
Right now, he's saying, oh, we've always thought that capitalism was so good, but maybe it wasn't so good. Maybe we should, uh, you know, maybe we should have a, uh, a socialist ethno state. Yep. Listen, the one thing that Vo Vosh was so correct about is the Nazbol vortex. Literally, I, listen, I, I fucking argued that that was like Vosh's greatest call. Still hold to it this day. 100%. The Nazbol Vortex is happening as we speak. And we're watching it right now. And then when it becomes woke, we think, oh no, it's okay. Let's use our power as rational consumers. In a oh yeah, he's going to have to change this. Enjoy capitalism. What is the Nazbol Vortex? Yeah, I can explain that. The Nazbol Vortex is a the idea that uh, material conditions in the U.S., a.k.a. Uh, the the well-being of the average American are so bad that the right cannot continue preaching capitalism anymore because it's so obvious that capitalism is failing. This will result in a bunch of con social conservatives advocating for the state to be involved, heavily involved, basically creating a type of socialism for us, but not for those filthy brown people. That's what the Nazbol vortex is. And You'll see, this is an increasingly common thing. Go watch right channels. We're gonna talk about this a lot, but go keep an eye out on right-wing channels, and you'll notice a lot of them are starting to talk about, oh yeah, you know, we should be, look at, oh, Tucker Carlson does this all the time, by the way. Tucker Carlson is like, these rich billionaires want you to sit at home and be censored while you can't suffer, but, you know, when they're gonna, they're gonna, they're, you know, the them them in charge want you to be poor yeah oh class reductionism is the le class reductionism is the left wing like how you pull um lefties who are kind of racist and kind of sexist and kind of transphobic class reductionism is how you pull them into that it's very bad and i believe it's going to happen i think there's all of the evidence is there i think that that's a 100 percent accurate thing <laughs> <laughs> true though maybe not tonight it's too late for me to get a, a fat joint but maybe maybe another day this month yeah maybe another day this month good one though good one. but yes that is the nazbol vortex the nazbol vortex is you can see it all around you seriously competitive market to boycott them but the problem with that thinking is that it presupposes yeah. at least three false premises which are that you have Maybe power at some point, you don't Ziggy. people are rational they aren't and the market is competitive it isn't so what's the solution to woke capitalism what's the solution to corporate propaganda privatized indoctrination and social engineering i have no idea i've been thinking about it for the last nine months or so. what is this why did he switch angles here this angle sucks why would he switch to this angle this angle sucks so i got nothing that's not right. I have a couple ideas. We'll get to that later. The point is that these people literally cannot separate their politics from their lives. And that's not something that we should laugh at, right? That's not something that we should look down upon. That's something that we should actually emulate. We should be doing that too. It's simply not enough to assume- Wait, has he done this? Did I just not see him do it? I haven't seen him do it. No, he hasn't. He hasn't done it at all. I'm scrubbing through here. This is the first time he's done it. No, he hasn't. Believe it or not, he hasn't. He does another video. I don't watch of power many of his videos, though. To assume that everyone just wants to be left alone, just like you do. You actually have to impose yourself. You have to have moral imperialism, because otherwise, you will be conquered, and it's already happening to us. And every what did I say about the projection? What? Listen vacuum to assume that everyone just wants to be left alone just like you do you actually have to impose yourself you have to have moral imperialism because otherwise you will be conquered and it's already happening to us and every year we lose ground now your kids can't even watch cartoons anymore without seeing stuff like this so let's go through it one two three <laughs> hey when we're older let's get married ha huh. you can't get married why not Black people can't marry white people. Hey now. It's Garnet from Steven Universe. Kids, don't be racist. Cut. Okay, people, we just need to get coverage. We'll start again in five. This is the cheesiest job I've ever done. 
Stuff like this doesn't actually happen. You already in showed real life. this once. This She's is blatant propaganda. The cartoon people say submit to the narrative, and it's probably blatant propaganda. Says the guy with a World War II era helmet and rifle, a enjoy capitalism, a Jesus, and a make America great again. Yeah, blatant propaganda. Probably it's the most important thing to note about this, which is that people are going to say, well, what's wrong with just telling kids to not be racist? And there's nothing wrong with that. But that isn't the effect. It sounds like you have a problem with that, actually. Active purpose of this type of propaganda. By the way, the guy who has literal propaganda, World War II era propaganda on his wall. Well, Cold War and World War II era propaganda on the wall. Yeah, I know. The, uh, the irony. Because it exists adjacent to and to serve the broader narrative, the end result of which is the unjust state facilitated redistribution of resources in the name of social justice. What? What? That's what you pulled out of that? You pull out of a comic that was out of a literal cartoon that's supposed to be addressing like people being racist. That's what you pulled out of it? Holy shit. It is, der oh my God, it's derangement. That's what I'm saying, though. They, he told on himself already. You have to be a moral imperialist yourself, otherwise the commies will get you. You can't, you can't show mixed relationships on TV. First, it's mixed relationships. Next, it's communism. So it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things if this is just supposedly saying, hey, don't be racist, because it exists as a means of recruiting and indoctrinating people into supporting the broader narrative. Plus, it gets a lot deeper than that with this one and also with the other one, too, as we'll see. But I really like how the kid comes in and he's like, hey, you can't get married because you're different races. And I saw that and I was like, do, do they actually think that's a thing that people say? Let alone yes. Yes, actually, yes. Yes, it is. There are a fuckload of people who are still like that. Yes, it is. Holy fucking shit. We just talked about this earlier today, completely unrelated to this video. Yes, it happens. Holy fucking shit, it happens all the time. Did Vosh do a video? I think Vosh did do a video on this. It's what John Doyle says. I mean, yeah, it, it is. He, he whistles it, yeah. Here, I'll take a look at that afterwards, Posadas John. Let me put that on real quick. Oh my God, it's so ridiculous. This shit is so exhausting. Children, why can't why can't I be the black lady, right? Why can't I come up and be like, no, 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 they can't get married because they're both boys. And by definition, two men cannot get married, and it's been that way for virtually all of human history up until, like, what, five years ago? Well, there you go. Hey, there you go. Nice. Nice. Good night, Cottagecore. Also, if the kid is racist, why does he get excited when the black lady shows up? And even after it cuts and the kid goes off, he still has an opinion. Because she's famous. Because she's famous. That's why. You fool. Idiot. He's mumbling to himself that racism isn't even a problem. This type of stuff doesn't even happen, which is true. But that's not something that children talk about or even think about unless they're made to. And that's the biggest thing with this whole, like, well, you know, what's wrong with just teaching them that being racist is bad? Because no child is racist. They'll play with whoever. No one cares. No one thinks about it. But they want to portray it. This is what, th I hate to do this, but this is what privilege looks like. When you've never been discriminated against in your life, you're the type of person who goes, I've never been discriminated against. Psh, children don't care. You say, as you literally just said, that you should pop in and say that the, the gay kids can't get married. Are you kidding me? Children, children, yeah. Yeah, exactly, devious. Oh my God! It's just it. He's ne this is the the face of a person who's never experienced being discriminated against in their entire lives and cannot understand other people. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree, Spikey. Yeah. 
Yeah, true, Danny. Yep. Yeah. Such that this little white kid even went off camera is. Ah, I'm so cringe that white that white women and all women won't date me. Arr! Arr! That's discrimination. Racist. When the camera's rolling, he's acting. He's epic and gay and woke and anti-racist. But off camera, he's got an opinion on the matter because all white people, even at age five, are intrinsically racist. Whoa. Dude, you're like five years older than this kid. John Doyle is like five years older than this kid. And he's racist as fuck. It's pretty accurate so far. There. Are you kidding? It totally does. Just because this has never happened to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Seriously, I didn't know. Yeah, everyone messes up sometimes. But you gotta realize it hurts to deal with racism. And when people act like it's not real, it makes it feel even worse. You have to acknowledge racism to work against it. You're True! Right. I can do that. <laughs> you kids better work on this before the wedding. <laughs> Whoa, that's just We're just actors. <laughs> we only just met today. Did you notice how just like in real life, the woke white kid went to defend the black? Based Garnet. Black kid before the black kid could even speak. And they're all educating this white kid about racism, three versus one, so that kids watching feel as though if they don't unfailingly agree with this narrative, what? they will be outcasts. It's literally- <laughs> Literally doing fucking, doing the fucking, the, the lady with the equations. There's three children telling the one child that it's wrong, and that's, that's to show, that's to illustrate to the children that they will be teamed up against and beaten within an inch of their life if they don't agree. You'll be sent to tolerance concentration camps psychological programming it's also funny that they're See like soon, spike just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean that it doesn't happen like no no it actually does happen to me quite often let's talk about systemic racism against white people with affirmative action programs that discount white oh people. oh my god lonnie you were joking but oh my god you might have been 100 percent right i get discriminated against all the time whenever a woman turns me down Arr! Discrimination. From positions in the workforce and universities, graduates. <laughs> My girlfriend left me for a black guy and I was discriminated against. She said, she texted me and said that I was bad at sex and he was good at sex. That's discrimination. <laughs> what a Stacy! <laughs> with access to capital the list goes on but is that not systemic racism that would be is that, that not would a series be a of systems context. that treats white people less favorably exclusively because of their skin color we can't talk about that right no one wants to relate to our struggle boys y'all don't know what it's like being male middle class and white that song is my anthem ben folds leading the charge on the congress okay i actually i i, I think i i think i can't I, like that actually has killed me Ah, uh, does he think that Ben Folds was being unironic? Yeah, this is this is the equivalent of the the crab getting its head snipped. Oh my God! National White Caucus, the Forgotten Gamers of America. That's a joke. The reality is that if you're white, you just have to shut up. That's why this kid. Oh my God! <laughs> it's actually. Oh my God! He's like, I was kidding. It's actually worse. <laughs> had a negative attitude about this whole thing. His opinion seemed semi-developed, especially considering his age. And then the second he gets a little bit of pushback, he just melts like, I'm sorry. I'm ignorant. I don't know anything. Also, I don't know who's in charge of comms for Racism Inc. But the whole, hey man, racism hurts. That's not cool. That's not reflective of your ground game at all. I've never had a conversation, nor have I ever witnessed someone educating someone else about racism without hysterically screaming at them plus wait a oh, second oh yeah here we go blue haired sjw's baby here we go kids are gay you see how these narratives don't operate individually they're all intertwined they're all intersectional if you will like the punchline of this whole thing is that the kids are actually gay and then she winks she winks that the five-year-olds are gay i don't need to tell you i don't think they're five-year-olds but i mean 
John Doyle's a 10 year old. So, oh, who cares? What's going on there? Virtually none of this should come as a surprise to you. Also, how is the kid gay, but also racist? I'm trying to square that. Like ostensibly he wants to marry the black. <laughs> Did he even watch the cartoon? Did he even? They're different characters. Hold on a second. So if you want to marry someone, you can't be. Wait, hold on a second. You can't be gay and racist. And if you want to marry someone, that means you can't be racist. That kid, but he's also racist. <gasps> Stupid woke child. You made me look bad. Ooga booga booga. I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. I want to go off the grid. If only I had something that could help me do that. Wait a minute, there is. Allow me to shamelessly transition to product mode. It is I, yet again, but this time wearing different clothes. So you know that I'm just a regular guy much like yourself. And like most guys, there's a lot of stuff that we do online that we don't want anyone knowing about. I myself- What? Excuse me? No, I'm sorry, I can't. Excuse me? usually spend north of 25 hours a week exploring various obscure internet forms dedicated to stamp collecting, stamp resale, and counterfeit stamp manufacturing and distribution. This is simply not a part of myself that I'm willing to share with anyone, especially not the internet service providers and government agencies that track and store all of your data for their own agendas. Do you want This is an ad directly to pedophiles. This is like an ad that's like laser targeted at pedophiles. He's like, do you go online and do you go online and beat off to things that you wouldn't that if anybody found out you would be killed, you would be ruined. Like me when I go onto my <laughs> stamps. It's about stamps, everyone. If you need to, if you need to hide shit that you're doing on the internet, you need to get one of these. want that of course you don't let me tell you how to fix this problem you go to expressvpn.com and they're going to use science advanced system and enable you to say that you're wherever in the world that you this is how you do it it's incredibly whatever you need. big government months for ours very epic not about a week ago that is arguably worse than the one that we just watched so let's check that out oh hey look we got another All one right class can anyone tell me who invented the light bulb Thomas Edison. that's not entirely true the light bulb could more rightfully be attributed to Lewis Latimer, the black inventor behind True. the filament inside the bulb. His invention made light bulbs affordable and efficient enough for the general public, bringing electric light into households around the world. Yeah, Thomas Edison well. was a piece of shit. Fuck Thomas Edison. Fuck Edison. He was a con man. A serial so, con now man. Now you know. Wait, is that it? Hold on. We're not going to mention why he invented the filament? To create a better standard of living for people who had only just been freed from slavery? Are we going to ask why kids are apparently learning about Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison! Ugh. And not learning about Lewis Latimer? These textbooks are incomplete. There were black Roman warriors, black medieval knights, black classical musicians, black cowboys, black fighter pilots. Where are they? I worry about you humans because Yo, you that Yo, stagehand! Did you see that epic stagehand? Cowboys, black fighter pilots. Watch this. Where are they? I Look at that! Oh, it's the sound guy! What the fuck? The sound guy caught that? Holy shit! That guy deserves a raise. What the fuck? You know how much equipment you have to carry when you're working sound? Holy shit. I know, I've done it. About you humans, because you only no Glooby. Unfortunately, we're walking watching conservatives get mad about Steven Universe shorts. If what about a hundred years? You rely on these stories to know your own history. True, Thanks Danny. to systemic racism, most of your storytellers prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. True, though. Ask yourself as you're learning history who's telling the story? Was this modified to make white readers comfortable? Are major details being left out that would credit people of color and center their point of view? Honestly, I should have asked for script approval before agreeing to do this. We'll do some rewrites. I'm sorry. We didn't know. Well, so now you know. I swear.
Again, the framing of this whole thing is very clever. Notice how she has to go off script. The white woman has to go off script. She's going to tell you like it is. You don't want to hear it? Maybe it makes you a little uncomfortable? Well, well, that's too bad because this woman has something to say. And the reason that they frame it like that is to communicate the impression that, well, they don't want you to know this stuff. They don't want you to know this information. They're hiding it from you. When information is distributed, well, they don't allow for this to be distributed. So she has to have this epic red. Wow, that was a lot to get out of that uh, section. Edit moment, go off, despite the fact that virtually every institution Epic in our Reddit society is on moment. their side. I'm sorry. I'd accept like four, one of which being the My Pillow yeah, Factory. Isn't she a God rock? bless Mike Lindell. He's our ace in the hole. My Pillow. Uh oh! Oh, oh, shit! Fuck! Oh! Quick! Undo! 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 This video came out when? When did this video come out? This came out in December. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, shit. The guy who's literally getting sued into the ground and taking down like four news networks with him? Hello, nationalism. Also, why is she complaining about education? We don't even control education. That's them. So if she's mad that it's not talking enough about non-white people, that's really not our them. Nice. Fault. And speaking of non-white people inventing things, Lewis Latimer's epic. He's high IQ. But how many white inventors can you even name? I can think of like five, maybe. So Lewis Latimer. exist back when being an inventor was a legitimate job title he had like half a yes, dozen patents is. very smart guy very impressive resume but they're really just spamming b with him i mean this is the guy they always talk about well what about latimer spamming what about b? lewis latimer and it's like yeah he made the life what does that mean spamming b spamming b is that supposed to be like a wait is b like the default term oh no i don't think so it's like xbox nah is it supposed to be wait 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 is b the default dance in 4chan i mean in uh in fortnite is that what it is is it the dance yeah that's what it is so i see wait i figured it out i'm the one who figured it out wait, none of you zoomers figured it out i was the one who figured it out because I play Fortnite. Light bulb better. Light bulb's pretty important. But if you get into other non-white inventors, then you have to get into really specific. Pogi. That's a pogi moment. Specific categories. Like, well, wh why aren't they learning about Elijah McCoy, who invented an automatic lubrication cup that simplified transportation and travel by railroad? And it's like, sweetheart. You're talking about public school history class. You're not really going to achieve a level of depth that's greater than a fading memorization of like seven random- Except for when you have to learn like entire chapters about fucking made up people. Like, did you, how many of you had history classes where you learned, wait, wait, when you were in like kindergarten, didn't you learn like the bullshit about like fucking Thanksgiving where it was like the pilgrims and the Indians had a big party together and then they ate all the turkey together. Yay! And it was like, and there was like, like 20 different Thanksgiving books that you would read that would have like made up stories about fucking random fucking characters, people that never even existed. You fucking learn about Pocahontas. You learn about fucking, yeah, Pocahontas. You learn about Pocahontas, not even the true story. You just learn about all this kind of shit. Yeah, Squanto, like all this shit you learn about. Like, but the thing is like, yeah, you learn on like two people and then you learn about like John Smith and, and um yeah she was real yeah but you don't learn the actual story and then you have like let's see you spend like forever learning about albert einstein you spend forever learning about fucking every single president ever you have to like some schools make you memorize every president all of whom until obama were white what are you talking about this is just so stupid dates and events the fact that we even remember that edison made the light bulb is a miracle in itself also what better symptom is there for a woke consumer i mean society? albert einstein was cool i'm not saying there's anything wrong about it he's just what he's saying is false what he's saying is false you learn all kinds of crazy shit how many times in school have you like in my school we learned about like german versions of the christmas myths like what 
reality than people bitching that kids aren't learning enough about which minorities invented which products. I literally cannot think of any. It is the quintessential symptom. Plus, she goes Wait, off like, well, the light bulb is pretty fucking important, dude. The light bulb made literally doubled the productive out more than doubled the productive hours of humanity like that like that previously nobody did anything after dark like nothing you you know how hard it is to do anything when there's like when all you have is like a lantern yeah the light bulb was one of the most important inventions of all time and inventing the filament that makes the light bulb possible is fucking crazy important what are you talking about? Why aren't we learning about black fighter pilots, black medieval knights, bitch? I can't even name white people that did that stuff. I just know what happened. That's you because you're stupid, John Doyle. That's because you're stupid. You could tell me right now that every medieval knight was actually African, and it's like 50-50 that I believe you. We learn about this stuff in second grade. We build a castle out of shoeboxes and paper towel rolls. It's really not that deep. I can't name more than three white people. Dude, what fucking, what second grade class did you build a castle out of fucking boxes? Dude, what the fuck? That's like a kindergarten activity. That's like a, that's like what five-year-olds do. Yeah, why does he put the higher quality camera lower? Yeah, it's probably private Christian school, true. Holy shit, there's so much with this video. In any of those categories, and I'm actually pretty well read. I actually paid attention in school. Yeah, I learned multiplication in second grade. I learned multiplication tables in second grade. Is this a hill that we have to die on? Is this really like that perplexing to you? Like, why is it that the history of a historically white country is primarily focused on white people? Like, I don't know, that's a real fucking head scratcher, isn't it? Now Does he know how many black people are, like, do you know how many pl black people lived in America? when they weren't considered people? Do you know who was here before white people? Hmm. Hmm. Then she goes off on her epic rant, white men owned yet again, and they're like, I'm sorry, we didn't know, because everything is framed as, if you don't agree, you're uneducated, but once you learn the truth, you'll agree. And then if you don't, it's because you're racist. And this is why- True, you're that to your kids. true, true though, yeah. That's true. Basically, if you learn the actual history and you don't agree with the actual like history that is fact and you just go, no, it was made by white people. Yeah, you're racist. And you can't escape it anymore. You can't. That's because ultra speed. That's because he does think that that's most of them think that way. Most, most Nazis, most fucking. I now I don't know for sure if John Doyle's a Nazi, but he sure has made some really questionable dog whistles in this video. But conservatives, especially ultra conservatives like John Doyle, who is undeniably an ultra conservative, they don't believe that woke white people are white. They think they're race traitors. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. Send them to private. They, this is, they do that all the time. Private schools. You can't keep them off the computer for more well, than- Did you hear what he said about white women? He thinks white women are a lost cause. Holy shit. Yeah, guess what? Guess what? There are white people and there are people who happen to be white. You ever seen that? You ever seen that? It's a really great rant. TikTok rant. Anybody seen that one? Ah, oh, it's really good. There are white people and there are people who happen to be white. People who happen to be white are your cool friends that you hang out with. They're awesome. And then there's white people. And white people, those motherfuckers got a hood in their closet. Yeah. Yeah. People who happen to be white has no, like, White people, white, whiteness, again, I've always said this, white people is a concept. Whiteness is a concept. Nobody is actually white. There is no actual real group of white people. White people have changed as a group over time to, to facilitate the status quo.
Yeah, I mean, that's basically true, Benjamin. Yeah. So many racist people, so many racist white people are like, but the Irish were fucked over. They weren't considered white. And now they are. Isn't that weird how whiteness gets gets uh, conveniently restructured whenever you need to make sure that some people are being pushed down based on their skin color and other people aren't? If you're if you happen to have light skin like myself, do yourself a favor and divorce yourself from the concept of being white. You will save yourself so much time and 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 sanity because it's a it's a completely stupid concept there are people and then there are people who believe in fucking bullshit like like john doyle does who think that like race means anything and it just doesn't it just doesn't mean shit there is like there are like Two circumstances where race means anything, like actually objective. And even those are really super questionable. Like, for example, your your ancestry affects certain risks of health. Certain risks for your health. That's a and and yeah, and it helps uh, and it affects where you came from. So if you need to find your family tree, it can affect, yeah, it can affect like how sensitive to the sun you are. But race is not even really used by scientists anymore because it's not very accurate. Because when you say white people, what the fuck does that mean? When you say black people, what the fuck does that mean? Race has never been even a thing. Race and ethnicity have always been fucking blurry as shit. And whiteness has been used as a tool to oppress others. So there you go. Let's continue. An hour a day or whatever. It is everywhere. And it's only going to accelerate from here. And if we don't do something about it, then it will eventually be state mandated, if not already effectively speaking, like that your kids are indoctrinated into these narratives under the guise of social justice and equity. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, Whoa, subscribe to the was, channel, turn on- That was sudden. You can't keep them off the computer for more than an hour a day or whatever. It is every- Who says that? Who says you can't keep them off the computer more than an hour? Anyway. Everywhere. And it's only going to- All right, cool. All right, we finished it. We finished the video. Hey, that was a good ending to that video. I'm actually really proud of that video. I'm actually really proud of that ending rant. I'm getting better at segments. Have you all noticed that? Have you noticed I'm getting better at keeping my segments organized? Like not perfect. I still do my stupid things, but have you noticed that I'm actually getting better at that? Yeah, slow and sure, pra getting some practice in. Eventually I'm gonna have these clean ass segments. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> Danny's like, yeah, I'm noticing. I promise, Danny. There's a small part of my brain that's always like, oh, I, I'm gonna make. I, I can't. It's not just my ADHD. You know, it's not just me getting distracted. Because if I fuck up and get super distracted, I'm making more work for you, and I really don't want to make more work for you. It's, it's in my brain. I've been training myself to keep it in mind. Like, all right, I can get distracted during parts. I'm not gonna make a segment. There are. I do get distracted sometimes, but most of the time, it's for a good reason lately. But yeah, David Reich talks about this a lot, talks about, wait, from a biological perspective, there is definitely a concept of race, but there shouldn't be any implications as a result. I don't think we should ignore geneticists, though. David Reich talks about this a lot. The biological concept of race has no, no bearing at all on what we're talking about. L literally, there's, there's like almost no connection. Race is when when a biologist is talking about race, they're talking about ethnic clines. If I'm not mistaken, is the right term ethnic clines that or regional clines? I can't remember the exact term. They're not talking about race as we understand it, like colloquially. They're two very different concepts. So 
I, I understand what you're trying to... <gasps> you made a demon bonk? <gasps> oh my god, you did! Yo! Yo! Bonk! How's it look at that level? Oh, it looks great. <gasps> I'll save it. I'm going to save it. Thank you, 85D2D Derek. Holy shit. Yay. I'll put this one on the site for sure. We're going to have this one as bonk. Impy bonk. Or no. We could just have it as bonk. We have it as capital bonk. That'll be great because it's all caps. So that'll let people know. Oh my God. The little horns are so cute. It's so good. I love it. Maybe I missed the main message of my talk. The main message of my talk is that socially, whether you use the word race or not is semantic, but different populations have, of humans evolving in different regions have very notable differences on a genetic level. We're, that's not, but yeah, but you can't see those with your eyes. You understand that? Y you understand that like, you can't see that with your eyes. You could see that with a genetic test, but you can't see that with your eyes. Because there are people of all kinds of different skin colors from all over the world. Your skin color, which is what we associate with with race and what conservatives definitely associate with race, has nothing to do with what you're talking about. And yes, the same words are kind of used because it's complicated, but... Uh, but the fact of the matter is that, like, socially, race means jack shit. It means nothing. Like, there's just no way. Like, nobody, it's it's kind of like, it's kind of like how, um, it's kind of like how sex has um, certain biological implications. Like, your literal genetic sex has certain biological implications, but it has basically no social implications. Yeah. Like, none. Your sex, nobody knows your sex. Almost no one. In fact, I would argue that next, almost, like literally for most people, no one knows their sex. Not even them. Most people don't even know their own sex. Believe it or not. I know that can be kind of counterintuitive, but unless you've had a chromosomal test, you don't know your sex. Yeah, you do, Fawn. It's probably good for you. Yeah, but chromosomal sex is even more complicated than we thought as well. Your doctor might, if you've had that. The way you guys are using black is just maybe different? What do you mean? Wait, hold on. Wait. M. Nelson, what do you mean But when you say black? Who is black? Oh, above? That's why scientists refer to lineages as sub-Saharan African and not just black. Yeah. Yeah, lots of people aren't. Did you know that intersex, intersex conditions are way more common than people used to think? Turns out, they weren't all that uncommon to begin with. It's like 5% of the population or 4% of the population. Is it one? I thought it was more like four for all intersex conditions. Kleinfelters is really common. Yeah, still pretty significant, yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah, 1% is a huge amount. Yeah. You've probably met intersex people. Let's see. Yeah. Let's check in on Twitter. What's happening on Twitter? Let's check in real quick. Chromosomes can be different on different body parts? Yes. That chimerism does exist. Yes. You found a diamond mule deer? Oh, good shit. Good job. Oh, fuck. Copium addiction. True. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great. We're getting.